Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello there, thank you for joining me again. I'm going to be talking about a TV series called The Witcher. So The Witcher is a Netflix show based on a series of books. Came out in 2019, I believe uh, December 20th. Stars Henry Cavill. Now The Witcher itself, I believe goes back to probably 1988. A series of short stories and books by an author, Andrzej Sapkowski. <laughs> so it has some cult following in Poland, and I believe it has a movie, a couple of adaptions here and there. I only know it from a good friend of mine who played the video games, and I watched the Culmini uh the videos on YouTube with all the cutscenes and then I listened to the audio books that had come out. And that's what I think this show is based on. So it'll probably deal with the books The Last Wish and The Sword of Destiny. I think it precedes the video game storyline. So I'm a big fan of medieval stuff. I love the genre, love the idea immediately. I actually did a season one trailer reaction with my friend at the Drunken Monk, and we had a couple of bloopers in it. And I never, I'll probably put it up maybe on my Patreon as a a blooper thing. But I discussed that I didn't know much about it till a friend told me about it, got into it, loved it. I was starting a new campaign in Dungeons and Dragons, and he wanted to play a Witcher, so I converted it to second edition rules that I use. People online have their own fifth edition versions, and they do other characters and things you'll find in movies, and they'll adapt them to certain role playing systems. So I did that for my friend, and we played for a while, and I really enjoy it. I like the myth of it, the legend, all the backstory. It kind of fits into my world anyway, on my own type of fantasy setting. So now I watched the TV series, and there's so much good about it. It reminded me of my excitement for Game of Thrones. You see some good, you see the bad here and there, and... It feels like the actors and the characters are going to pull it off. However, watching it with my friend from the first episode, I'll say right here, I have no spoilers, no major plot reveals, but I am going to give a little bit of a critique of how I see the plot going and stuff. So there might be some minor things if that bothers you. So as the show starts, it's really captivating. You get right into it. I loved it. I think I did uh, episode one. And I noticed is storylines that they're running side by side by side. I had a concern of how you can handle that. It seems hard. However, the show does something and maybe I missed it. I don't know if I could miss it for seven episodes. If it's an eight season, eight episode season. So the first thing is the confusion of the storyline. The time things are taking place and what you're watching and where it fits in to what you were shown in the first episode. And as the episodes were going on, I thought, oh, okay, well, this is confusing. Then, oh, okay, I see what it means. I, I understand now. And trying to piece this together became a little annoying. So I'm going to say that a nitpick of the show would be that in itself. However, I'm generally going to give the season one an overall approval. I think the good outweighs the bad. The second thing 
is if you're going to use special effects, and when I first did the when I did my first podcast on it, I admired that they held back on special effects, used it in a smart way, and didn't draw me out of the show. Well, that doesn't last long. It's a fun show. It's got good acting. It feels um, authentic. It gives me a certain mood. I enjoy the way it can play with Monster of the Week with an in-depth storyline. So I'm kind of digging that. I'm getting into that. And if you're going to show something that needs special effects, be it a creature, an effect, try to do it smart. And if it serves a purpose, usually you let it go. I mean, even Game of Thrones, there were scenes that draw my eye because the CGI looks bad, but you need to tell that story. You need to interact with that dragon or White Walker, something to that effect. So it's needed and you do your best you can. Fine. But what the show did was use shitty special effects for purposes that didn't seem to interest me. There was, there was no weight to it. So if you're going to show a special effect or a, a an in creature, it should be an important part of that story. It, it should have some weight to it. But if you're going to start putting and throw, putting things in and throwing things at the characters that are random, you know, fine, I'm, I'm up for a good random encounter. Do it right. Get people in mask. Look how good the Lord of the Rings did with the Urukai. And even Lord of the Rings, I could watch and spot out some of the flaws and the special effects and stuff that drew my eye. But you do something well done and you can see the efforts there. I usually give it a pass. But I don't like to see it when it's it's not an important... It has no weight to it. So I'm going to get a random character jump out. Uh kind of adapted to a person. I mean, look at all these uh, zombie makeup shows that push the technology and the practical effects to the limit. It could be done well. So I'm going to say those are my two cons. I wanted to get them out right away because they have a a problem with them that I think a lot of the audience will identify with. Me, I gave it a pass in the long run. In the end, I really enjoyed the show. I rolled my eyes and having to become a detective in the storyline, well, it kind of paid off because I guessed a lot of things that were going on that were right. But I don't think it's a thing you want to do in general. I did my podcast on Westworld you got to be careful. You want to be hmm, unique. You want to have a good twist and an angle on storyline, keep people guessing. Okay, but I think you take a risk. And if a show is going to take a risk and lose my interest, like Game of Thrones, it's fine. People still love it. It's uh, argued one of the best shows ever on television. I'm happy. It, Lends credence to my genre that I love so much. So I'm worried about this show maybe doing that to me. Season one of The Witcher, I enjoyed. I got problems with it. Because you got good acting. Some great fighting and choreography. Amazing graphics at times that really fit. That look like it's done well, if seamless. I enjoy the fun of it. It's got its own sense of humor. And you got music that works. In the beginning, I was worried about it. And now it just it, it fits. It, it's working. Get the storyline synced. Try not to do more than two side-running plot if you can or if you do make them part of the hero uh, monster of the week so if you got two major plot lines fine and then you got random encounters and the things that are going to happen but if you're going to try to do three of them sometimes more or even sometimes less but you're going back in time or you're explaining how things led to certain things 
I think you should be more apparent because unless I miss the blurry sound effects uh, that indicate a dream or a flashback or the uh, captions or indication that it says seven years ago or whatever it is. I'm not saying that that's what it is. You, I could see being lost. I could see being confused about the, chain, the events that are happening. So maybe it's an artistic style and they're going for a thing that will catch on. That could happen. I could see it. But it's, it's a concern of mine. And as I watched it with a friend and the other friend who actually got me into it, I got their opinions on it. Just something I think should be, we should keep in mind, or I will keep in mind as I wait for season two. And I guess that's it. Uh, I really like Henry Cavill in it, and there's a list of actors and actresses that are in it that are really top-notch. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I watched the first episode, there was a character I really liked, uh, a couple of them actually, and they were they would they died in uh, a battle, but because the show goes back and forth. You get to see them over the season. So I was actually happy about that. So maybe that's like a unique way of, you know, in the beginning, like, oh, damn, Boromir died already. But you can go back and tell the story in a way where he's still in it for the season. So I guess there are pros and cons. Uh, my advice is to check it out. If you're into this, it's definitely something that could grab you. I think it's got a more good than bad. I look forward to season two, but I have concerns. Everybody, take care. Hope you're doing well. I'll talk to you all next time.